Hey everybody and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today we are going to make a kid friendly, adult friendly, delicious, easy meal. We're going to make sloppy joes, we're going to make the classic baked macaroni and cheese, and then for dessert we are going to have a dirt cake pudding. So let's get started. Now I have a pot of water already boiling here with a pound I'm using penne pasta because that's what I had. Traditionally macaroni and cheese normally is elbow macaroni, so you could use elbow macaroni or uh, penne or rigatoni, any kind of a shape that has texture or a hole in the middle so that cheese can get in there. I'm gonna let that go till it's al dente, about eight minutes. Now when I wrote this recipe, I did it for the crock pot, which I sometimes do cook it in the crock pot. But now, you know, I've discovered this Instant Pot and I love it and it's so much easier. So you can do it the same way in your crock pot or in the Instant Pot. Now I have here about two pounds of ground beef and I'm using very, very lean ground beef. And your Instant Pot has a saute feature and that's what I'm using. I'm just sauteing the beef down in the bottom of the Instant Pot. Now I'm using very lean ground beef. If you are using the crock pot method, you would want to brown that in a skillet and then drain it. But I'm actually just gonna do it all in my Instant Pot. While that's browning, we're gonna dice up some green pepper because Sloppy Joe's traditionally do have some green pepper in it. It's just a delicious, addition. If you don't like green pepper, you can leave it out. I like it in there, but you can customize it if you want to use a red pepper. If you want to add a little bit of heat, you could use a jalapeno pepper. It'd be good too. I have discovered my Instant Pot and I love it. It took me forever and I would imagine a lot of you were the same way. It sat in, in the box I was just a little bit leery, a little bit unsure, and maybe that's the better word, not leery of using it, just unsure of how to use it because it's got a lot of buttons on it. But pretty much I used two. I used the saute button and the manual button and just set my own temperature. Some people uh, use the rice or the multigrain. I, I don't do any of that. I just use the manual feature, but I love this thing. I just love it. It really just makes cooking so quick. And the fact that it has a saute feature in addition to your cooking, it is truly one pot cooking and I really do like it. Now, in addition to your pepper, you will need some onion and celery diced up and I've already got that done. Got it minced up there because we're gonna just, um, add it in before we set the pressure on the Instant Pot. Basically, an Instant Pot is a better, safer pressure cooker. You know, I've used a pressure cooker. My mother-in-law bought me a pressure cooker, I guess maybe the first year we got married, Mike and I, and we've been married almost 25 years. So I've been doing pressure cooking a lot throughout my adult life, but you know, I, I, I just find this one even easier and it's just so safe. So the Instant Pot is really nothing new in the sense of it's a pressure cooker, but it just makes things easier. And I, if you've not bought yourself one of these little things, this is just a little meat tamper, if you will. It just breaks up your beef or your chicken if you're doing chicken, whatever you're using. And by the way, you can substitute ground chicken or ground turkey in this. I love this thing. It just breaks it up so nicely. And again, if you wanna do this in the crock pot, you can. You just will brown the beef and then add all of your ingredients together. And here's my celery and onion. I'm gonna add some ketchup some Worcestershire, a little bit of flour to thicken it up. I'm using a big can. This is a, a 15 ounce can. If you only have the small eight ounce can, 
of tomato sauce, you will need a cup of water too. But I'm gonna use the big um, can of tomato sauce. It's just browning up very, very nicely. All right, let's check on our pasta. I just wanna cook that till it's al dente and there's only one way to test pasta. And that's done. Salted the water. After it came to a boil, I'm just going to let that drain for a minute. Our beef is almost done. I love sloppy joes. A lot of people, the only way they've had sloppy joes is the can version uh, where you mix that can with your beef. There is no comparison to homemade sloppy joes and the um, canned version. So much better. All right, that's brown. It just takes a minute. I'm gonna add my celery and my onion, my green pepper. Where's my little scooper? Love this little tool. I'm gonna add a little bit of flour. This is about two tablespoons of flour. That will just thicken up my mixture. I'm going to stir that together. <clears throat> Excuse me, my allergies have just not stopped and my throat gets very dry. I'm going to add my can of tomato sauce and again if you only have the small eight ounce can you will need to add a cup of water in addition to the tomato sauce. Going to add a couple of teaspoons of apple cider vinegar, some uh, chili powder, a little bit of brown sugar, about a fourth of a cup of brown sugar, Worcestershire sauce. Heard somebody one time they couldn't pronounce it, they didn't know. They said that what what's what's this here sauce? Worcestershire. A couple of tablespoons or so. You eyeball that one. And some ketchup. About a cup. Not rocket science. Eyeball that. You don't need to measure out your ketchup. Unless you just want to. The less dishes I have, the better. All right, stir it together. <clears throat> mm. Make sure you've got a consistency that's a little bit liquidy because your pressure cooker needs liquid. Matter of fact, I think I may add just a little bit of water to that, just maybe a fourth of a cup, just so that I can get that pressure built up. If you're doing it in your crock pot, you don't need to do that. But you want to have that pressure built up. All right, I'm going to turn it off, put my lid on, make sure that it's on sealing, not venting, turn it back on and set my time for, come on you. Why am I not working here? There we go, for 15 minutes. And that's it. It'll start up on its own. It'll come up to pressure and it'll cook. I'm gonna clean this up. When I come back, we're gonna start on our macaroni and cheese. I'll be back in just a minute. Alrighty, now our instant pot is coming up to pressure. My macaroni, in my case, uh, penne pasta, the little mini penne actually, uh, I just drained it and I added about a tablespoon of butter just to kind of coat it till I get my sauce made. Now I have a skillet preheating and I'm going to add some butter, a couple of tablespoons of butter. We're going to start this out by making a roux. We want to melt that butter on our stove. In fact, I'm going to cut it into a little smaller piece. It'll melt faster. We're making a roux. We're going to make a traditional sauce 
In French cooking, it's called a bechamel or a white sauce. It's the base of most uh, gravies and sauces. Equal parts butter and flour. This is just a couple tablespoons of just regular all-purpose flour. And I want to just whisk that in. And that butter is going to absorb all that flour. We're going to let that go for just a second to cook off that raw flavor. Now, this is a white sauce. We don't want it to be browned. If you, wanted to, if you were making a dark gravy, this is the same process. You would just simply let that roux go a little longer. I'm going to add about a teaspoon or so of salt, maybe a fourth of a teaspoon of pepper. Then we are going to slowly add some milk. This is three cups of milk. You want to put in maybe a cup, then whisk it in. I'll turn that down just a little bit. Stir in a little more. You don't want to dump all of that in at one time or you will have lumps. The key is slowly. This is not a non-stick skillet. This is a hard anodized, so that's why I can use my metal whisk. And my whisk is coming off of its edge. I love these little things, but I find sometimes they come off that edge just a dot bit. You gotta just slide it back in there. Come on, you. There we go. Okay. Get that absorbed and then pour in the rest of your milk. At that point, you're okay to add the rest. Once you get most of the lumps out and you need to bring that back up to a simmer and that'll thicken up. You know, I have to make a mess. It would not be an everyday man of show if I didn't make a mess on the stove. I just have come to the conclusion I just am simply a messy cook, but that's all right, it tastes good. All right, let's let that come back up to a simmer. And that's going to thicken because of the roux, the flour and the fat together. Now here's where you can use your own judgment. I'm using cheddar, but you could use any kind of cheese that you like. While that's coming up to a simmer, I'm going to make the topping for the traditional uh, baked macaroni and cheese, and that's just bread, bread crumbs. This is fresh bread. I'm using whole wheat, but you can use whatever bread you have in your house. Pretty much whole wheat's all I ever buy. When I buy bread, it's going to be whole wheat, unless it's a specialty type thing, like rye or something. Just put two or three slices of bread in there. I love this little mini chopper. Plug it up. Got to make sure it's locked in there. Sometimes you fill it too full, like I did, then you got to pull some out. You just want to pulse it till it becomes fine bread crumb. If you don't have fresh bread, you could use the dried bread crumbs. They're not as soft, but that's okay. Once you get it mostly broken down, can add your bigger pieces. Mine, I added too much. I had three slices. You really only need two. My stomach is growling. I am so hungry. Come on. There we go. Stir your sauce. Stir that sauce. When you've got it 100% lump free, you want to start adding your cheese in. That will be plenty. I don't need those. All right. I'm using cheddar, but you could use Gruyere. You could use a mix of cheddar. You could use any kind of cheese that you like. The Velveeta cheese is good in this. Just to cube it up and let it melt in there. That's good too, I've got a couple of cups. 
I like to add it slowly. I don't like to add it all at one time. I like to add it a little bit at a time. Let it melt. Make a mess. Oh, see that beautiful yellow cheesy sauce. You could do this sauce and pour it over broccoli or cauliflower. I mean, you could do this over many, many, many things. This is just a cheese sauce. That's all this is. So easy to make, okay? All right, stir that in, let that melt. And that's all there is to the cheese sauce for macaroni and cheese. Cut your heat, you don't need it anymore. Now what you're gonna do is combine your macaroni or your penne, whatever you've got, with your, let me, do it in this bowl first. You will need a baking dish, something that's safe to put in your oven. Then I'm going to add my cheese, all of it, to my pasta. I could eat it just like that. Doesn't need anything else. But a lot of people like to bake it. If you wanted to stop here, you can but a lot of people like baked macaroni and cheese. So that's what we are gonna do today. Oh my goodness, does that ever smell delicious. Okay, now I'm a lefty, so I gotta go backwards here. Pour that into your casserole dish. Mm. Spread it out. Then we're going to take our breadcrumbs and we're going to sprinkle them over top of the casserole. We're going to put it in a 350 degree oven for about 30 minutes and it's going to be delicious and golden and yummy. I'm going to pop this in the oven, clean up my mess. When I come back, we are going to make a dirt cake. I'll be back in just a minute. The mac and cheese is in the oven. Our sloppy joes are almost done. They got nine more minutes. And we are going to make the dirt pudding. Now, dirt cake. In this bag, I have a box of Oreos, just a package of Oreos that I'm going to make into crumbs if I don't hit my glass. This is a great job for kids. <clears throat> Let me move that. Just want to beat those until they're crumbly. I'm using a meat mallet. You could use a rolling pin. You could use a hammer. You could use whatever you wanted. Just something to kind of break them down into semi-fine pieces. Okay. Then in this bowl, I have one block of cream cheese one cup of powdered sugar, and about a fourth of a, of a stick of butter. And I'm gonna mix all that together. The cream cheese and the butter are softened. You could do this in a stand mixer if you wanted. Just get that mixed together. I'm gonna add a little bit of vanilla, forgot my vanilla teaspoon or so. I like pure vanilla. I know it's more expensive, but the taste is just so much better, I think. And you just need a small amount. 
All right, when you've got that incorporated pretty good, we're going to add one eight ounce package of Cool Whip that we have thawed. Now, if you want to make your own whipping cream, just take eight ounces of heavy whipping cream and beat it. You don't need to add any powdered sugar to it. Okay, we're going to mix all that together. This is a great make-ahead dessert because it really needs to chill a couple, three, four hours before you serve it. All right, no need to wash the mixer because it's going to all go to the same place. I have here two boxes. Let me just switch so you can see what I'm doing. I have two boxes of vanilla pudding. I'm using sugar-free, but you could use regular instant, not the cook and serve. And I'm not gonna use the full amount of milk. I'm only gonna use a couple of cups of milk for both boxes. I'm gonna stir that in. You don't need to wash your mixer in between because we're gonna combine them. So you will have a few little lumps in there, it's okay. Not a problem. Mix that up for a couple of minutes. And it'll be thicker than you're used to because typically you add two cups to one box. Then we are gonna add this to this. And we're gonna mix all that together. Okay, now mix all that together with your little hand mixer. It will be thick. You want it thick. Now I like to take my spatula and just combine it all. Make sure I scrape down those sides. It's okay if you see some white streaks in there. It's all right, not a problem. Mm, that smells delicious. Then I'm using a trifle bowl because I think it looks pretty. But if you want to use a, uh, just to bake up whatever kind of dish you want to use is fine. I'm going to cut this a little bit just to make it a little easier for me to get the crumbs out of. And then you want to put about half of these crumbs in the bottom or you could do a fourth and layer it, whatever you want to do. We'll just layer it a little bit. Put that in there and then add some of your pudding. However you want to do it. You just want to end up with dirt on top. Dirt being cookies. So I'm going to make a couple of layers. You can do however you want because this is a taller skinny. If you were doing this in like a 9 by 13 pan, I would just do one layer. Now I'm going to put the rest of my pudding. Mm -mm. Man, that smells good. Okay. All right. Spread it out. <clears throat> you could also make these in little individual cups if you wanted to. And then put the rest of your dirt on top. And that's all there is to it. Then you want to pop this in the refrigerator for three or four hours. Let it get really good and cold. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then you're ready to serve. I'm going to take a quick break, clean this up. When I come back, we're going to wrap it all up and serve our delicious sloppy joes and our baked mac and cheese. I'll be back in just a second. All right, now everything is done. I took the lid off, I let all the pressure out. Do not open the lid on your Instant Pot until all the pressure is gone. You can move that thing over to release, stand back, let it go, or it'll release naturally. And then I just serve them over top of just, I like sesame topped buns, but you can do whatever you want. 
Just scoop it out and oh, it's so good and it smells amazing. Here is our macaroni and cheese that we made, our classic mac and cheese that we baked. That is a hot, hot, hot pan, so I wanna make sure that, just get that out. And there you go, there is some delicious macaroni and cheese. Honestly, you can make a meal just on that. You, you really don't even need anything else. So there's our wonderful macaroni and cheese. And here is our dirt pudding, dirt cake. Um, you just want to serve that, just scoop it out and serve it. I don't have an extra little plate here, so I can't really show you, but you just scoop that out and after for dessert, you could top it with some extra whipped cream if you wanted to. You could serve this. This makes a great, uh, you know, quick and easy in your instant pot. You can have it done in 15 minutes in the instant pot and you want to take the lid off. You can put it back on saute to let a little more of the liquid evaporate because you got to remember in your instant pot, you do not get the uh, evaporation. If you wanted to cook that on the stove top, the very same way that I cooked it, you just brown up your beef, drain any grease that you have, add the rest of the ingredients and let it simmer for like 20 to 30 minutes. And you've got a delicious homemade sloppy joe. And I'm here to tell you, it really doesn't even begin to compare. This is so much better than the canned kind that you buy, the Manwich style uh, Sloppy Joe mix. This is infinitely better. And our macaroni and cheese. Honestly, that did not take any longer than a box of macaroni and cheese. And you can mix it up any way you want. You could use, I use cheddar, but you could use any kind of a good melting cheese that you wanted. If you wanted to top the uh, breadcrumbs with a little more cheese or maybe a little Parmesan cheese, you'd be good to go. So there's an easy, quick, kid-friendly as well as adult-friendly, delicious, easy meal that you can cook any night of the week. Thank you for joining with me, and I will see you next time on Everyday Manna.